Hey there, viewers. The way to any person's heart is through their stomach. Food can really boost your mood, but there's a process it goes through before it reaches your brain, and it all starts with the mouth. Let's discuss what happens in your mouth after you eat. Why do you drool after catching a whiff of your favorite food? How exactly do you swallow? We're talking all that and more. The nose. There are many foods we enjoy not only because of their taste, but also their smell. You can always tell that chocolate chip cookies are in the oven just based on their smell. Sometimes you can even smell them baking in your neighbor's house. This just goes to show you how powerful your nose is. But what does this have to do with your mouth? Well, there's a tiny passage that connects your nose and your mouth. So as soon as your nose takes in the aroma of that delicious pizza slice, it automatically passes it over to your mouth to enhance the taste. Your food is just incomplete without smell. You can try it out for yourself by closing your nose and eating your food. It's a pretty big turnoff. When you have a stuffy nose, the passage between the nose and your mouth gets blocked by mucus. The smell sensation is not passed over to your mouth, so it's only natural to feel like you're eating tasteless food. Once you recover from your runny nose, you can once again taste your food. What's one food you enjoy while you're sick? Does it make you feel better? Tell us quickly in the comments section and stay connected with our ever-growing Bestie community. Now, let's see what happens when you take a bite of your food. The tongue. As soon as the food comes in contact with your mouth, the tongue detects its taste. It's the tongue that tells you the pizza is hot and spicy, as well as the ice cream that's too sweet and cold. In short, it lets you know whether or not your food's good to eat. It also tells you to spit out food that's gone bad and protects you from food poisoning. If you closely look at the surface of your tongue, you'll find small elevations on it. These are the papillae on your tongue. Hidden inside them are your taste buds. The taste buds detect five basic tastes of any food. These are bitter, sweet, salty, sour, and umami. Your tongue usually has around 5,000 taste buds on it. Each taste bud has 100 cells to detect taste. Pretty neat, huh? Your tongue is naturally pink and moist. If it turns white or any other color, you should be concerned. You need to scrape off the dirt that gets clogged in small bumps on your tongue. Keeping the tongue clean can also stop dirt from collecting over your taste buds and help you taste things easier. Looking for answers on all the latest health and wellness news? Hit that subscribe button and join our millions of followers. Stay up to date on all our great bestie content. Is it necessary to chew food? Absolutely! If you just gulp down giant chunks without chewing, it could lead to indigestion, stomach cramps, and bloating. The teeth and tongue play an important role in chewing your food. The tongue swirls food from one side to the other while chewing and biting. Before telling you more about teeth, let's not forget about your gums. Here are 16 expert techniques for stopping your bleeding gums. Your teeth. Generally, adults will have 32 teeth and babies will have 20. The front teeth are called incisors, which number around four. Next to it are the canines. If you want to bite down on an apple or a sandwich, these teeth help you. Canines are especially important if you enjoy non-vegetarian food. The hard and rubbery meat can be torn easily by canines, as they're a lot sharper than the rest of the teeth. No wonder carnivores have sharp canines. After biting off a morsel, the food goes to the back teeth. These are the premolars and molars. The upper and lower teeth in the back of your jaw act as grinding stones that churn the food into a fine paste before you swallow it. Every tooth in your jaw has crevices where food can get trapped after eating. Bacteria from these hiding spots start feeding on the food and produce acids. These acids are dangerous and can ruin your teeth by causing decay. This is why you should never forget to brush twice a day and rinse your mouth after every meal. There's another important substance which helps the eating process along. I'm talking about saliva, of course. It would be very hard to swallow your food without saliva. Saliva is 99% water, along with 1% mucus, enzymes, and chemicals. The salivary glands located at the bottom and sides of the mouth keep pouring saliva continuously. Your body makes around two pints, or one liter of saliva every day. People with dry mouths have a difficult time swallowing their food. If this sounds like you, you may have to take a big sip of water while eating. For most of us, it doesn't take much for our mouths to produce water. Your mouth starts watering as soon as you see tasty food. This happens after just smelling tasty food. A whiff of your favorite meal is enough to make you drool like a bloodhound. You require saliva for three major reasons. Number one, moistens your food. 
Imagine eating dry foods like chips or crackers without any saliva to moisten them. It would be very hard to swallow a dry ball of ground food. To top it off, you won't be able to taste any of the food if you have a dry tongue. A thin coating of saliva over your tongue will help you taste your food better. Number two, cleans your mouth. We just saw how food and bacteria hide in the far to reach areas of your mouth. Guess what? Saliva acts as a fluid that flushes things out of these areas. Saliva is almost antibacterial and helps to keep the mouth free of harmful particles. A few enzymes from saliva can keep away decay and infection. Number three, helps with digestion. The same enzymes present in the saliva have the ability to break down compound starch from foods like bread, pasta, rice, etc. So saliva can mellow down the effect of harsh foods on your stomach. The moist, ground ball of food is now ready to be swallowed. The tongue pushes this ball to the back end of your mouth. At this point, the food enters the esophagus, which is the uppermost part of the food pipe. This is a hollow-like tube muscle that squeezes and pushes the food down into your stomach. The esophagus actually has rings of muscles arranged in a tubular fashion. So in order to push the food ahead, each of the tubular muscles has to contract. The human esophagus is 25 centimeters or about 10 inches long. The food has a long way down to finally reach the stomach. A giraffe has an esophagus of around two meters, but unlike humans, the giraffe can regurgitate food or bring it back up to its mouth from the bottom of the esophagus to chew it again for easier digestion. That is both really gross and equally cool. You need not be sitting upright for food to pass down from your esophagus to the stomach. You can try swallowing in an upside down position or in a headstand position. Your esophagus is so strong that it will still push the food to the stomach. The saliva helps by making the food wet, which can easily slip down to the stomach. You have to be very careful of what you put in your stomach. It's really delicate. The wrong foods can give you anything from heartburn to indigestion. Watch and learn about these nine foods that are hurting your unhealthy stomach. Do you often feel gassy and bloated? Watch these top nine causes of a bloated stomach. Go ahead, click one. Or better yet, watch both and learn more about how to become healthy. Which food makes you drool the most? Let us know in the comments below.